Hey folks, Mike and McGee here. We are gathering some elderberries. You may know elderberry juice is superb for a cough syrup. It is almost superior, if not superior, to medical cough syrups. It's just awesome. So we're out here and we're gathering a few. Now one thing that we notice looking at these berries is they do not all ripen simultaneously. That makes it a little difficult for a busy person. Now it's okay for a bird or somebody that don't have a job to just wait for them all to ripen. For somebody that only has certain days, it's a little difficult, but that's just the way mother nature works. It's not a cultivated plant. These are wild elderberries. So we have to work with nature. We have no choice. We can't force them all to ripen at the same time. Now, most of them on this particular cluster are all ripe. It is almost a miracle that the birds haven't already eaten them all off. It's a race with time, a race with the birds every year. Maybe the fact that I let this grow up and I didn't keep it all clean around the bushes might have helped, don't know. But anyway, we're gonna be gathering some of these and we are going to show you how to make elderberry cough syrup. Let's do it. Now, according to what I've read, the stem of the elderberry is toxic. I haven't eaten elderberry stems, I don't know, but as far as just putting the whole stem and everything down in and boiling it to make your juice, I don't recommend that at all. Pull the berries off the stems. If you've got OCD, this is not the job for you. These berries are so tiny, you have got to move fast just to get anything. And if you're picking out every single little green berry, you, you won't get anything done. These are big ripe ones. If you know what kind of worm this is, let me know. This thing is huge. It's as big around as my finger. You see it's grabbing hold of this leaf with all two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, with all 10 legs. And it is having a nice little feast of elderberry plant. And uh, yeah, elderberry plant's poisonous. It, tomato plants also are toxic. Uh, potato and the tomato hornworm eats it with great relish and does not die so obviously there's worms that can eat poisonous or toxic plants uh, tomatoes are in the nightshade family that is toxic so anyway big worm if you know what kind it is post it in the comments if you don't care for some reason a lot of plants that actually have medicinal value are toxic in some way I don't know why that is, but it is. For instance, and I've already promised you in a previous video, I was gonna show you poke berries and how poke berries can effectively treat arthritis. Now, the first time, when I first came to Tennessee, I didn't know the difference between a poke berry and elderberry, I didn't know it. I accidentally, got some and ate them. I mean, not accidentally. I didn't know what I was doing. I ate two whole clusters like this. And yes, I got pretty sick. Well, then a few years later, say 10 years later, I meet this elderly gentleman that tells me pokeberries are very good for arthritis. Obviously, our pokeberries aren't ripe yet. I see we definitely have a few ripe ones starting. So that's exciting. We're excited to get this video out to you as soon as they are ripe. If you want wild varieties, you have got to stop your mowing, weed eating, and bush hogging in areas like this. 
if you have just a, a small piece of property around your house, you really can't do this. You need to get cultivated variety planted in there because these things don't produce berries the first year. Hey, I used to keep this area mowed and bush hogged and clean, but then I realized, hey, I need to, I need to get a buffer zone between this property and my neighbor over here. So I just let it grow up and voila, I got elderberries in the process. It wasn't that I was trying to grow elderberries. And this is one thing, if you keep your place neat and clean as a pen, especially if you have a little bit of acreage where at the back side you could just let it grow up, you might have elderberries on your place and you don't even know it. So try it out and see. If you can't do that, get yourself a cultivated variety from a, a nursery or whatever. Now we're gonna get to the house and we're gonna begin the process of making this cough syrup so um, we have a bunch out here that are still green we're just going to leave them let them ripen we'll come get them later if we have time and we hope to have time but we probably won't make a video of it because we're making the video now and we don't just make the same video over and over so let's head to the kitchen all right we're back to the summer kitchen we have got our berries now what you're going to do is you're going to wash them you want to wash them real good, put them in a strainer that has a hole just small enough that the berry don't go through, but all the other junk will go through. Now, if you get, if you have a little bit of this and that, it doesn't really matter because you're going to be straining the juice out of any kind of seeds, skin, and any little tiny bits of organic matter, whatever. You just want to wash it to get the dirt off mainly. So once you do that, you're going to put it into a bowl. You're gonna take it from your washing bowl, you're gonna put it into a cooking pot. Now you wanna cover this with water to cook down. I don't recommend chlorinated water. This is for a cough, okay? So we're just gonna use well water or spring water in this application. All right, the next thing you're gonna do, throw a lid on it and put it on the stove and let it start simmering. On a wood stove, you got hot spots. You got to know kind of where your hot spots are. We've got beans cooking right here for lunch today, and so I'm just going to throw this in here. It's going to be simmering and it's going to cook until we can mash it and separate the juices from the pulp. And that's the that's the ticket. All right, the next thing you're going to do is mash them boogers. Next, you're just going to put it through a strainer, and you can use whatever cheesecloth works good. Put it, hang it in a cloth. I'm using a plastic strainer, and we're just going to pour it all in and let it let it drain. All right, next, we're just going to ladle our juice right in our jars. We use small jars because this is medicine. This ain't for drinking. This is just for making cough syrup and we're not making the cough syrup now we're actually just putting our concentrated juice in these small jars and then later this winter when we get to coughing maybe we'll have us some maybe we won't get a cough maybe we won't ever need it but that's the purpose this winter if we need it if we haven't made it we won't have none we'll have to hopefully buy some somewhere and that's kind of up in the air whether or not you'll be able to buy some so better to just go ahead and plan in advance and make it For this application, we are going to do a hot water bath. Now, all you need is to put your jars in. Now, you can't, you can't just put your jars in here and have it sitting on the bottom with that direct heat. It'll break your jars or do something bad. So we're just going to set this in. This will give it an air space or it'll give it space off the bottom. It doesn't have to be a bunch of space, just any kind of metal that you can lay down. But this is working good for what we need to do. And we're just gonna put these in here, space them 
in here. All right, we're gonna cover this with water two inches over the top of the jars and we're gonna bring it to a boil. Let's go. All right, we're gonna set it there. We're gonna bring this baby to a boil. All right, just as soon as this comes to a boil, you get it off. You don't leave it in and boil for like a few minutes. You, as soon as it comes to a boil, you get it off, take your jars out, let them cool. All right, that's done. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna pull these boogers out and they are hot, let me tell you. Pull them out and just set them out here. As they cool off, they will seal and we'll be in business. Stainless steel, it don't matter if it gets wet. <laughs> all right, that's it. That's all you have to do. Pick your berries, clean them, cook them. Strain them out and get them in the jar. Them things sealed so quick after we done it. Some of them I tapped just to see if they would seal. Yeah, they popped right down. One of them I just poured a little bit of cold water on it and within a second, pow, it sealed. The first two did it on their own while we were talking. I don't know if you heard it or not, but when we get ready to use this, we can mix anything in it that we want for our cough. Upper respiratory, it will work. And I'm thinking probably we'll heat it up like a tea, maybe put a little lemon in it, maybe put a little uh, honey in it. What I would like for you to do is drop down in the comments. I know a lot of my subscribers are huge into this already. Tell me what you put in it. I know there's a lot of things that can be put in it and really good for coughs. If you don't care, drop down in the comments. That way everyone can benefit from your knowledge and experience. So, but. We're going to get on out of here. We'll see you on the next video.